Welcome back to MVM, my name is Kevin, and in this preview, we're gonna be taking a look at Roll Camera, a one to six player cooperative dice placement game where everyone's gonna to work together in an attempt to write and shoot a movie with a very tight budget in a short amount of time. So, before I go any further, I just wanna mention that this is a prototype, and so the final product that you receive will be higher quality and things might look a little bit different. But let's go ahead and jump right in. This is the board here, and in roll camera, everyone's going to take on the role of a different person on a movie set. And each different character that you play as is going to have different abilities. So I mentioned before that it is a dice placement game, and so you'll notice that on each player board, there are different blue spots where you're gonna place your dice. Similarly, on the board, there are a lot of blue squares. Those are the places where you're gonna place dice on the board. Now, what we're trying to do is work together as a team to write and shoot five scenes for a movie. First, we have to look at what scenes we have available in our storyboard. That's what this is right here. And we are going to then have to construct a set and shoot the movie. The end of the game, the goal is to have shot a movie, stayed within budget, get it finished in time and to either have it be of high enough quality or have it be so bad that it's great. And I think that's kind of a fun feature that they added to it is you can actually attempt to create a movie that's so bad it kind of like goes down in history <laughs> as being that movie that's so bad it's great. And so that was that was a nice touch. So at the very beginning of your turn, what you're going to do is draw a problem card. Problems always come up on a movie set and every turn you're gonna draw a new one. So we'll come back to the problem cards later because right now they might not make a lot of sense. You're gonna roll the dice on your turn and each die represents a crew member that is on set. You're going to look at all the dice that you have and for any pairs that you have, um, you can do special things with those. So for example, let's say we know that we want to shoot one of the scenes in our storyboard here. Well, currently we have nothing on our set. So the first thing we'd want to do is build a new set piece. And so we can do that by having two, notice the equal sign here, two dice that show the same face. So these two sound guys are gonna work together to build a new set. So not only do we need two dice, that are the same face, but we also have to spend a dollar down here. And then you get to choose one of these two set pieces to place on your board. Now the blue spaces are where we can place our dice. And so we have to make sure that if we wanna say, shoot this scene, then we wanna place them in a way that is going to work well with other set pieces. So for example, if we did wanna shoot this scene, maybe we buy this here, place it like that. Because now we see that we could place lighting here, actor here, actor here, and then we need another set piece giving us a blue spot to place our camera. And so for step one, that would be a good way to use a couple of your dice. Other things that you can do on the board are resolve problems. Like I said, we'll get back to the problems in just a little bit. Um, so let's jump into uh, getting an intern. So you can place any die you want on this space here, and it's going to give you a problem card, but it's also going to allow you to take one of your other dice and turn it to any side that you want. That can be very helpful. Another place you can place your dice <laughs> is on the production meeting spot. Now, everyone's going to have three idea cards in their hand, and during the production meeting, we are going to see three of those ideas. And so each person, in a like a three player game would each pick one and present it to the group and then you're gonna choose one to play immediately you're gonna choose one to go in the discard pile and then one to go on to your to-do list one of these spots here and so all of the idea cards are going to be good they're gonna help you like for example here this one lets you pay two dollars to resolve all your problems and sometimes when you have three problems clogging things up and making your life very difficult, spending $2 to resolve them just all in one go might be a pretty good option. So, that's your production meeting space. Once you have um, 
let's say we have this one here in the to-do spot, you can also place a die here and spend a dollar to use that. Or if you had the dice available, you could place two there in order to use that idea card immediately. Now let's talk about the problems because the problems are going to affect the things that you're doing during your normal turn. So at the beginning of your turn, first thing you do, draw a problem card. So this one here, what this does is it makes it so moving a set piece costs a dollar. Now I mentioned earlier that you build a set piece here, but another action you can take here is moving your current set. So if we already had a number of pieces out on the board, we'd shot some scenes and we're looking at our next scene going, oh, we need to rearrange things. You can place a matching pair there and you can move your set, you can rotate it however works best for you and your needs, it doesn't cost anything. However, with this problem here, it means that moving around your set pieces costs a dollar every time you do it. So you can understand that Resolving this problem would probably be helpful if you need to move some set pieces. Now, the way you resolve problems is pretty simple. Up here, you'll notice that we have just two blue squares. That means any two dice can go there, and once those two spots are there, then this problem has been resolved. However, if this problem is not resolved, the next person's turn be begins, they're going to draw a new problem card, and this one will slide down. So now this new problem makes it so that at the end of the current turn, quality goes down. We'll talk about quality in a second. But this one from before just became harder to resolve. And because now, instead of needing any two dice, it needs two identical dice. Once again, if problems don't get resolved, they're gonna slide down. You now need three identical dice, two identical dice, and two any dice. So you'll see how letting a problem stick around for longer can become more difficult. It's much better to just resolve it as quick as possible. And uh, the nice thing about resolving problems is that once you've resolved a problem, it will get flipped upside down and tucked under the board like that. And as you can see here, when you have resolved five problems, you can either gain $2 or go up one on the production schedule. So really quickly, you have this little uh, clipboard here, which is how you keep track of your budget and the production schedule. And so anytime you spend money, you'll move this guy down. Anytime uh, a turn ends, you'll move this down on the production schedule. Now, one thing to note is that this prototype copy that I have has changed. And so um, a note that I got from the designer is that down here at the bottom, you don't, you no longer draw extra problems for being at the bottom of the production schedule or being low on your budget. Um, so this here that says plus one problem at start of turn is no longer uh, relevant, but that's how, how you keep track of your budget and your schedule. But let's say we've set things up like so and we want to shoot this scene right here so we have things placed where we need them let's say we're going to roll for our turn this is our this is our result <clears throat> so i'm actually going to cheat really quick okay <laughs> thank you for bearing with me as i um cheat with my dice roll. So we want to shoot this scene. We need lighting. So we can go ahead and place our light up there. And we need two actors, one here, one there, and then we need our camera. So now we are ready to shoot. We have everything that is required on our in, in our set and ready to shoot. Now what's great about this is that the layout of the things in the set actually make a lot of sense with the image that you'll see here. Because you've got the camera right behind one of your actors with another actor off in the distance and a light behind that actor. And the image that you see here is exactly that. This is how you would set things up if you wanted to shoot this. And because, you know, this guy's here is silhouetted, he's got a long shadow, so there's light behind him. And then the camera's right here looking at this guy that's close. 
I just think it's very clever that they incorporated so much detail into the storyboard and the layout of how everything would look in real life. So that's just a fun little fact if you're into filmmaking. Um, but once we've got everything set up, then we can pay the amount. Now you notice that it costs more to shoot a scene that's up at the top here than down here. Um, but when we spend $4, we also gain one time on our uh, production schedule. So that's kind of nice. If you shoot this scene here, it costs $3. Here it costs $2, but you also have to draw a problem. So there are pros and cons. However, if you notice this here, this makes it so that by placing one of your dice on the $1 spot, we actually don't pay $4, we only pay three. So that saves us a dollar. And so working with some of these set pieces that provide us with a little bit of extra cash when we shoot, that, that can be pretty helpful because your budget's pretty tight. You also notice that some of these have the different die symbols on them. And so in this case, it's the, the side of a, an actor and um, it's got a red border around the outside, that means that space can only be used for an actor. And so we could place this somewhere like so, so that the actor is where they need to be. But if our set was not like this, if we had it somehow maybe like this, right? So we would need actor here and lighting there. We can't place a lighting die on the actor spot. So you have to move things around. Those limitations are just gonna be one extra way that the game continues to be a challenge. Now, going back to kind of what we had before here, we're ready to shoot, we spend the money, and in this case, we get to go back up one on the production schedule. And this, anytime you shoot a scene from your storyboard and you've finished it, you're gonna flip it over and it's gonna go in the top spot of the editing room. And so as you shoot scenes, they'll start at the top and work their way down. Once you've made it all the way and shot your fifth scene, then the game will end. You will notice that this also has this little star next to it. This star is quality. So you shoot your scene and you get a quality bonus for this scene. Some scenes have two quality bonuses, others have none. But at the end of the game, you wanna make sure that over time you've improved your quality enough to at least make it into the white up here. If you're lucky, you might make it all the way up to the top, which means your movie is a cinematic masterpiece. Or like I mentioned earlier, you can just tank your quality. You can just make it go down. And if you intentionally, I mean, I hope it's intentional. <laughs> But it could happen where you just have some, you know, unfortunate events unfold and your quality keeps dropping and dropping. But if you end the game on the very last spot here, it's so bad, it's great, you also win. However, there are a lot of little things that kind of bump up your quality and even if it's just up one from there, you don't win. So this, this here, you don't want your quality to be anywhere in this range. You want it to be either on the white here the white or better yet cinematic masterpiece okay so we have a script a script will provide you with extra quality or it might take quality away at the end of the game once you have filled up your editing room then you will look at your script which by the way can change from idea cards and I believe from problems as well, these cards can change. So they are little half size cards that form a script for you. So at the end of the game, you're gonna look at both halves here and see that in this one, for each purple scene we have, we have one, you would lose one quality. But because of this one here, for each red scene and purple scene that are next to each other, quality goes up. So those are just another way to bump up or maybe lose some quality at the end of the game. And if you are trying to be uh, create a cinematic masterpiece, you might need some extra bonus points from the script there at the end. So the last details that I want to highlight are the character abilities that you have. Now everyone is going to have a spot to place a die where you can refresh one of your idea cards. It just, you discard one and you draw a new one. 
and then the other two abilities are going to be unique to your character. So if you're going for quality, having a production designer is a great idea because on their turn, anytime they roll one of these, they can place it there and bump up the quality by two. That's awesome, right? So everyone has these cool special abilities. Like for example, the cinematographer, anytime they use a uh, camera here, that is the gaff tape ability, uh, they are going to resolve one problem. So instead of needing two or three dice to resolve a problem, you can do it with one, it just has to be a camera. So there's a lot of cool abilities on the different characters that you can be, and having a, um, a variety of them, I think, can be helpful. So one final thing about this game that can help make it fun, if you've got the right group, is it gives you the opportunity to be kind of silly. Now, you might notice that some of the script um, promptings and some of the scenes from the storyboard, they have a little bit of humor in them. And one extra thing that can bring out some comedy in this game is each character has a player privilege. Now, let me just read this one to you. This is the star. You may request applause from the other players at any time. Now, this doesn't affect the actual gameplay, but you could see how something like that could be kind of funny in the midst of a game with all your friends. You could just be like, hey, you must applaud me. And you know, they, they have to clap. And so even though they're not required at all to play the game, they can be a fun way to just spice up the gameplay. And there's also one other thing where at the very end of the game, after you've shot all of your scenes, then you get to pick one person to kind of tell the story that you've created in this movie. And so there's little promptings here at the top. And so what they can do is they can read the first one, once upon a time, and then look at the image on the that scene and kind of give a short little description of that scene and then move on to the next one because of that. Right, and there's a fight, and but now there's a guy with a knife, and so it's so that's just another fun way to you know kind of put a, a nice ending to the game because you finish your movie, and so then someone gets to read out you know the summary of the movie based off of the scenes that you've created, and that is roll camera. Now, if you found this video useful, if you are interested in the game, check out their Kickstarter campaign. It should be live right now. We will have a link in the description. Please feel free to subscribe, comment, ask questions. We'll do our best to answer your questions in the comments. Check us out on all the social media platforms, and we will see you in the next one.